If you want to see me perform live, join me every Wednesday at 10 p.m. for Ty Rivera and Friends at the Creek in the Cave here in Austin, Texas. Welcome to Slumber Party, everybody. What will be Austin's hottest comedy podcast? Most definitely, without a doubt, if you run another podcast and that bothers you, put it down in the comments. Don't bother me with it in real life because I don't care and I'm just as not nice as you've heard I am. Um, I'm here with my regular co-host. There's the boss baby, Mr. Hoochie Blue Eyes, otherwise <laughs> known guess. as How'd you do that? Hooch, otherwise known as Hooch. Hooch. I hate both of you. Uh, and then we have little Nick. Howdy. <laughs> and then there's producer Justin. And today we have a special guest. Our special guest is the one and only Kill Tony Zone, the pride of Seattle, Washington. Yep. <laughs> the pride of <laughs> Seattle, Washington, Mr. Hans Kim, everybody. Oh, yeah. This is Hans Kim. This is Hans Kim. <laughs> I love that you went extra Asian with the two. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's what uh, that is such a great intro. I had to like mellow it out with like just looking like a fucking dork. Yeah, no, you you nailed it. You really did nail <laughs> Thank it you. for being Hans Kim. Yeah. <laughs> Hans Kim, by the way, if you guys noticed, he's one of my most embarrassing moments on Kill Tony. I don't know if you remember this happening, but I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. And I'll explain why. <laughs> when we were in Vegas at uh, MGM Grand, you guys were performing, you, Joe, Tony, and Brian Simpson. I came out and when we were backstage, you were like, hey, I met you at the spot in Washington or the comedy spot in Washington. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then when we were on Kill Tony, it was my first time doing solo. So I was especially nervous because I was a solo <laughs> guest for the first time. And then they asked me, Tony asked me, he was like, do you know Hans? Or, you know, said, what do you think of Hans? And I was like, I've known Hans for a long time. I met him at the comedy spot in Washington. And then you're like, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you piece it together like that, it makes you sound like a complete asshole. I didn't feel like you were being an asshole, but it did. in the moment it was like, wait a second. I just had no idea, I guess. I don't know where I know you from, because I know I knew you. Before the tattoo and the piercings. Yeah. Because I knew you as like without that. And then I saw you in Las Vegas. And yeah. Then I was, that was the first time I saw it. Yeah. And so you were the one that reminded me we had met at the comedy spot. I guess that time I was doing that I don't weekend. know where I met you. I, I know I met you though. It's <laughs> well, just you hard remember to... comedy spot, right? You know that club. You know where I'm talking about. Jai Tai? No. The or a one, comedy underground? No, it's called, what is it? The Spot Comedy Club or Comedy Spot? Comedy it's in Kirkland, I believe. Can you Laughs pull that Comedy up? Club. Laughs, is it? La Laugh Spot. It's called the Laugh Spot. It's called Laughs Comedy Club. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And so I met you, apparently, or that's what you were talking about when you said whatever. Did I meet you at Laughs? Yeah. Oh, shit. And that was way <laughs> before. And then My you, memory is so shit. I had no idea that would have happened. Yeah, no. And so... Because um, oh, when I'm doing Kill Tony, I'm trying to be honest and funny. And if I'm, I'm like, I don't know if I can be funny right now. Let me just say something honest and maybe that'll set something up. Yeah. Later. So I just was like, I don't remember. I, 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 yeah, I'm so sorry that I said that. I feel horrible. <laughs> no, no, I get it. I mean, like the thinking goes... Throw this f under the bus real quick. No. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, well, you do a lot of drugs, so I'm not surprised you don't remember me, Hans. You were always a nightmare, even back then. Yeah, well, I don't know that side of you. I don't know you party or anything. You know what I mean? I don't, I like, I know I you, like but I don't know I like the relationship you. that we have because I feel like we have, like, a very sustainable relationship with mutual respect, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, hopefully. we don't know each other's, like, dirt, and that's yeah. a good thing, you know? I mean, like, I like it that way. I really do. Yeah. But yeah. So um, I know you've probably been over your story a million times, so we won't go too much into that because I'm sure people can watch other podcasts to find <laughs> out, you know, about how you came up and took Kill Tony and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But where you're at now is... Um, you yeah. Were you there when, and, uh, on Kill Tony when Rick Diaz did the undertaker turned off the lights and he showed up no i wasn't okay. there for that no i i got there late well, this that will night. come out after that yeah so yeah yeah that's that's the thing that's coming up that people will probably enjoy did you like just as a performer did you like that part of it 
What? Like that he did the Undertaker type thing where the lights went out. Because I heard it looked really I mean, cool from the audience. I heard it looked cool. Well, no, I don't really want him to look cool. So no, I don't <laughs> like that. <laughs> so do you really hate Rick Diaz? Yes, I really hate Rick Diaz. <laughs> it's not an act? It's not a bit? I mean, wh why would it be fake? Like, isn't it more believable that it happened? Like, he would try to like he didn't consult me and he just like decided to call me out repeatedly on the show like what who would enjoy that uh for, i don't know i views? wonder who would even put him up to that yeah, you know what i mean it seems like the kind of thing that uh, seems like a horrible idea yeah. yeah i don't think he was put up to it i think he's slimy enough that he would do it himself <laughs> <laughs> okay okay well it's getting hot a slumber here. party <laughs> that's funny wait do you know if tony told him to do that no tony didn't tell him to <laughs> okay. do it i may have accidentally told him to do it because i thought it would be fun and i thought it would help set you guys up for a fun time well i know how it would help him but uh yeah i, I think it'd be great if i could uh you know look back on it and be like hey i defeated him twice but, yeah, well, um, I, you know, and that's something that people have been debating on. And I talked about it last week. I definitely, when I was in the room, did think that you had won because I was there on New Year's Eve. I was okay. hanging out and I was in the audience. Uh -huh. I did legitimately think you had won. Um, but then Matt and Shane gave their perspective and then they did audience voting. And I talked about this last week, too where I was sitting next to a guy and we were chatting and he asked me who I thought had won. And I said, you, and he said that he felt like Rick had. And then when it got to audience vote, it was like audience was super loud for him, which surprised me. And in my head, I was like, well, maybe I was wrong. Cause you know, it's decided by audience vote. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what I think it's mm -hmm. the audience that decides. And so I was like, maybe I was wrong. And then like for you, the applause definitely was there. People were excited about you. But it seemed like when David Lucas came out, that helped escalate the audience even more. And then the band started playing your music, which got them even more amped. And so I feel like that almost clouded the way that the judgment went down. And I think that's why there's a debate online. Where as was to David it. Lucas? Was he in the front running mm -hmm. around? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who's even seeing that? You can only see that if you're in the front row. Well, at the, at first, yeah, but what happens is people in the front start getting super amped and they started making a lot of noise for I don't David. Know. It sounds like conspiracy theories. I think the band was loud, man. Conspiracy I think the, theories. I think the band can't. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to try to look for reasons. Are you why denying me twice, Hans? Now yeah. we, first we didn't meet in Washington. Now I'm up You're, on the, you're, you're right. saying I didn't win. I'm a you know, crazy which old everyone's man. Everyone's saying. I just can't handle another person saying, especially from someone I thought was a friend. No. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Damn drama and slumber party. It got ugly <laughs> fast. <laughs> I don't think David no, Lucas made that big of a difference. I appreciate that he did that. And I think that's so beautiful and so awesome. Uh, I don't think that my set was the best or the most amazing. I think it was a tough joke to translate to an arena. I've done the joke. It's not my favorite. I wanted to pick to do it again. It kind of doesn't make any sense. But if you like go with it, it's kind of like silly and dumb. But I don't think that kind of joke works well in, in an arena. I would have picked more mathematically, you know, stronger jokes, logical jokes, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not saying that I was comedically more comedic that night than Rick Diaz. Um, I don't. Uh, I I mean, he could have Wait, been funnier that night. Would you say you were night. popularly more popular than he was that night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a part of it being likable. Yeah. Well, but. Okay. <laughs> when it comes to the likable part, you've taken some hits online lately. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think that that is going to affect the voting when we no, go? No, because it's uh, Tony's going to be a judge, Brian Redman's going to be a judge, and then the guests are going to be a judge, and the audience is also going to be a judge. Okay. So everyone's going to have a share. So whoever is the funniest, I think, will win that night. Yeah. And I'm confident that that will be me. Yeah. And oh. So it's like five judges this time? Yeah. So it's okay. like if Tony, if like all five panels vote for you, but the audience votes for Rick, then that means you still win because you got five to no, one? Yeah, I think it's just the numbers, whoever has the most. Oh, shit. It's five things, so. 
If it's a split decision, that'd be crazy. Three, two. Yeah, That's yeah. I, I'm surprised. I was surprised though, because I didn't know you guys had any kind of history at all when I suggested it to him. Because I did suggest it to him one night when we were hanging out. You know, I was just like, "Hey, you should." Here's probably, something you can do. You should probably challenge Hans. I don't blame you. He would have done it anyways. Yeah, he's sensed weakness. <laughs> he saw my set. He was like, "Oh, this guy didn't do very well. I can take him," and uh, he's uh, attacking me now. And it doesn't feel good. And I don't think that's a very nice thing to do. And no, I will not be his friend. <laughs> well, then I guess I don't have to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna mark that one off. Yeah, just scratch off. Will you and Rick ever be friends? <laughs> I need to defeat him to uh, be good at comedy. So I cannot, if I got to choose, I, either I can be friends with Rick and quit comedy or I can not be friends with them and continue to strive to be better. Well, you know, I personally hate to interject my feelings, but I already think you're good at comedy. <laughs> it's uh, your podcast. So, but I do think you're already good at comedy. So I don't think it has anything to do with that. You know what I mean? And I like, but at the same time, I just wonder if you guys could make a lot of money touring together and maybe they keep you guys uh, like in separate cages <laughs> throughout the travel uh, process. We're just snarling at each other. <laughs> like he only flies Delta, you only fly United, or yeah. however it works. You know, Why so is he a floor higher than me? <laughs> yeah. I demand a higher floor. Yeah, yeah well, you he's know, we'll make sure he's on a floor cage. lower. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make sure he's on a lower floor. You deserve that. You have been around longer, so you deserve the higher floor. Um, no, I think he played it well, you know, kudos to him, but you know, that's, it's, uh, it's a long game and, you know, I'm going to be in it for a while. So, you know, if I'm going to keep doing well, he's going to be known as the guy that, you know, try to fuck with me. So I don't know what he's trying to do. And I don't understand the hate towards me because he attacked me. I'm just defending myself. Like, I'm sorry if I'm a little mean to this guy, but I'm nice to everyone who challenges me. It's just not this guy. Just. Yeah, I guess I could be nicer and just be like, oh, yeah, he thinks I suck at comedy. He might be right. Who knows? Does he think you suck at comedy, though? He thinks that I have weak sets sometimes. Don't we all? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just pretty obvious that uh, a lot of people don't uh, appreciate my minutes all the time. So maybe he sensed that. And he was like, oh, this is like a limping gazelle. Let me attack him. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like you're in a tough spot as far as that goes because you do have to come up with a minute every week. And that's something I really do respect is like you can't just go out and do the same thing every week. And that does put a different kind of pressure on you. And we could all like sit at home and be like, you know, I could do a minute every week. But in practice, it's a lot different than just saying it. Yeah. You know, any comic feels like they could do a different minute <laughs> that's every how week. i felt i felt that way before i started doing it I'm like oh i guess i was wrong yeah no of course <laughs> i feel like all of us would have problems with that you know what i mean i consider yeah. myself to be pretty great at this and i feel like you know for me to do a different minute every week it's like yeah and you have the audience at home a million people watching your uh, <laughs> minute. yeah and keeping you honest you know what i mean because yeah. i'm sure if you repeat anything the audience at home is going to be like he always does the same <laughs> joke and that's the way they talk about yeah. The internet is full of absolutes. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, never yeah. just like, you know, oh, tonight he did this. It's like, he always. And it's like, yeah. one time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, like, I have a good style in terms of, like, rebounding from criticism because it's just joke, set up, punchline. Yeah. So I think I'm resilient. I think, like, I'm a joke writer. I just need to write more. So I think, it, yeah, shit on me because it would have been someone else. I'm better at taking it. I'll, I'll get better. I mean, I'm not good at taking it. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you'll get better at that. But also, like, when it comes to the head, because it's turned you guys into kind of the headlining of Kill Tony shows. Yeah, when he announced it, when Tony was like, and now it's time, the crowd was like, yeah. it was like a fucking sound bar of... Yeah. You know, like if you're looking at the wave, it was like really strong. Oh, yeah. No, I was there because I, you know, I'm kind of flighty, so I'll be in and out of shows. But I had told both Christina from Sunset and Haley from Sunset. I had put both of them on the job. I was like, hey, I'm going to be smoking cigarettes and running around and stuff. 
please send me a text as soon as they say it's going to be uh, Rick and Hans. And so, like, they both sent me a text, and I ran in there, and so I caught all of it. And, yeah, the audience loved it. It was electric. So, you're welcome. But, uh, (laughs) (laughs) but do you not have an appreciation for that part? Does that part not feel good? I mean, I'm not saying Um, appreciation to me or appreciation to Rick, but just in general for the situation, because, like, it's turned you guys into focus. It was bittersweet. It was like, yeah, it's the focus, but it's because I suck at comedy. So I don't want that to be the focus. And yes, I have the headlining attention, but it's like, yeah, I, it's just because I'm, I've am i been struggling. And yeah, so it was great to have that, but it was also mixed with like, I was really in a in a mood. Yeah. Those two days. It was, it was a crazy time. And I'm glad I'm over it. And uh, I don't think I'll be in that state of mind LA forum because, you know, a lot of things were happening with my relationship, with my comedy. So it was just... Night not, one, you did you do a minute? I wasn't I there. Did night, a minute, one. night one, okay, yeah. yeah. So night one was just basic, like you just came out, did a minute, and then night two was you guys headlining. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's yeah. I guess that's a different amount of pressure. Also, like you know, you did recently have a breakup, or is that not a thing anymore? That was after the. I know, but like, oh yeah, that's still a thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's the that that was the same night that Rick showed up and did the Undertaker thing, right? No, that was before, before okay. like a week before that she broke up. I broke up with her. Yeah, how old is she? 25. Yeah. How old are you? 34. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to find somebody that's at least 30. Like, no, just Fuck. because. My friends have had these conversations with me and they don't say 30. So (laughs) let's be happy. Let's be happy that we're still 30. Yeah, exactly. 29 minimum. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there is an age, I guess. Where people start becoming more mature. Yeah, and they're ready to settle down more. Because in those years, you do. And it's like, you know, especially like she is inarguably a good looking girl. She's very pretty. And so like, you know, the more options people have, the more they want to try to exercise those options. Yeah, it's like Bill Gates can make uh, more money not picking up a hundred dollar bill. It, it makes sense to him to not pick up a hundred dollar bill. So like her, it doesn't make sense to be in a relationship. The opportunity cost is too high of what she could be doing. Yeah. Mm, yeah. It's, yeah. But hey, being in a long-term relationship is nice. It is. Yes. But were you ever cheating on the road? No, I never no? cheated on the You're road. You're not a cheater? No, I never cheated on the road. It's not what I heard. Just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I never cheated at home either. I no, wish I could be like, you know, well, this bitch should come out. Yeah, no. I can she's cheat. hiding behind the curtain. <laughs> I, it's an expose. It's a <laughs> yeah. Montel Williams. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, see, the father. I see Hans as a non-cheater. Because he's very logical. I feel like he'd just be like, well, that's bad. So I'm yeah. not going to do Overall, that. Overall, it's better to stick with one person. Yeah. Yeah. Also, are you a good liar? I don't think. No. <laughs> what a crazy thing to I ask. I don't think right so. After. Like, I'd be, if she would be like, you're cheating, I'd be like, no. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> they kick no. your shoes. <laughs> oh, shucks. Uh, do you want Uber Eats? <laughs> <laughs> that's, they're big on that. Are yeah. you? Yeah, that's their thing. DoorDash. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're always ordering food. Yeah. Yeah, almost every time I, I would know. talk. Because almost every time we'd be hanging out at a green room, you guys would be waiting for some food to get there or leaving <laughs> to get food. Or sometimes I saw you out in the street getting your food, you know, like flagging down the because <laughs> everything shut down on six. So you guys are meeting some bitch in an alley like it's a drug deal. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a bag of food. You got my burrito? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I know you guys. You know what I and we've talked about it before, or she's told me too. You know what I mean? When she's like, "Yeah, we're waiting for some food to get here right yeah. now." It's definitely a comfort thing. Yeah, you yeah. go home. You don't want to admit to yourself you had the best meal of your day already. You always want to think it's ahead of you. Chasing the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. I never thought about it like no. that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like a drug. It's basically, you're, I'm bored, you're bored. What do you want to do? Order food? Let's get some food in here. Yeah. Food yeah. always makes it better, too. I love food. Yeah. Do you feel like she um, was at all? Like, you do the joke about how um, guys, girls tell you, what? how's your joke go? That girls say, you don't even like me, you just... Uh, 
You don't like my. You don't even like who I am. You just like my pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Like, well, you don't even like me. You just like me for who I am. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like there was any of that with her? No. No. I think it was pretty sexual. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think like she wanted to have sex sometimes more than I did. Not all the time. But yeah, I was sexually satisfied. I mean, I, you know, well, I don't know. I don't want to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I get there's probably a point you want to don't want to go yeah, past. I don't piss don't, her off. Yeah, I get a phone call. <laughs> Like that's gotta be. Uh, Are some... you guys still in contact, or is it like burnt the shit? Yeah, pretty much at this point. That's good. Best way to do breakups. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I try to keep it up, but someone's gonna get hurt. It's like a hot potato. Who's gonna get hurt if they leave now? Yeah. Oh. Wow. So who's I... gonna move on first? Type of thing. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And but so, it's... are you seeing anybody yet, or are you just keeping your options open? I've been having fun. Yeah. just <laughs> But nothing serious. Got a boy. I like didn't, barely had sex. But it's just fun to be around women and make someone act like they like you. Yeah. Just by being How awkward. long did you date her for? A year. A year? Yeah. So are you like, is it hard for you to get like back in the game and like flirting with girls? Is that like a lot yeah. for you? Ew. I do a lot of thousand yard stares. <laughs> 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 Because it's nerve wracking having to go walk back up to a girl and be like, sup. Um, yeah. And then I assume probably do a lot of the girls know you here in Austin? Is that I only thing? pray on, I mean, I only hit on <laughs> girls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play that normal shit. That's no? not for me. No, I don't. That'll do well there. <laughs> <laughs> You've done that before. I ain't going back. <laughs> I ain't going back. No, I feel weird around girls now. It's like we're, I'm imitating what I had with her. It's like we're playing house sort of. Okay. But it's pretty fun to do that. I like doing that. Yeah, it changes things quite a bit, though, that you are well known. Like here in Austin, what's your what's it like as far as when you go out to run errands and stuff like that? Like how often do people recognize you? Usually service industry say something like whenever I do pick up on East Austin, a lot of the restaurants there are like cool hip people that know about things. So they know about it. And yeah. plus, they're in a situation where they have to talk to you, yeah. So they they can bring it up easier. But uh, I bet people recognize me and not don't say anything a lot. I hope. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I don't. I don't get stopped that much. I'm just like pretty. I can do. It's not that different, but it is slightly different. But I mean, I think it's a good amount right now. I don't want any more. I'm like trying to not be normal. Or, yeah, yeah. I have, yeah. I just want to plateau for a bit. I just want to gather my bearings. Yeah. But you're on the road a lot, aren't you? Yeah. And things are selling well for you. Yeah, that's just practice. Like, that's just, like, the game time for me. I'm not trying to do that to, like, get any anything else uh, besides money and whatever. But, you don't yeah. have an interest in being famous? Um, Not yet. Yeah? What? Not any more than I am now. Just because I feel like, you know, I have a little bit and people, there's, like, enough hate towards me. So I want to limit that. Yeah, I guess you're in a different position that way because, uh, like, a lot of people are super nice to me online. Even though, like, my opinions might seem out there, people are really nice to me. And I figured yours would be crazy because I get stopped quite a bit or talked to quite a bit. And so I thought yours would be even worse than mine. Like, or, or like you know, and I don't mean worse like that, but just, like, the amount. I'm so bad at those. I try to be as nice as possible, but I'm, like so autistic and social i'm like <laughs> drained all the time i don't know why i'm so tired but yeah it's i like opening up to people that know i already know i don't like doing the new stranger thing i like just getting like being vulnerable i don't like having to be guarded you know and you are legit autistic no but you know i act like it a lot more than most people <laughs> yeah 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 because i want because you know everybody says they're autistic now so i don't know who's actually autistic and who's not and I can't say that I'm one of the people that can tell whether or not a person's actually autistic. You know, I mean, like everybody's been talking about narcissism lately, too. And it's like, I don't know. You know, those are just buzzwords for me. 
Yeah. Everybody's being gaslit right now. <laughs> you know, that's another buzzword that people love to throw around is this person's gaslighting or, you know, and so I don't know who's what. So I figured I'd ask you since you mentioned it. But yeah, you just have an autistic feel to you. Yeah, I guess it happens more than I realize. And then I'm just like, oh, hey, sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> How many years have you been doing Kill Tony now? Almost three. Yeah, and things just got crazy for you right away as far as doing Kill Tony. Like, uh, what was it like as far as when you first started? Was your popularity through the roof and then people eventually grew to a point where they started being mean to you? Yes. Yeah, so it was started off a really good way and then they eventually kind of turned on you. I mean, there was a little chatter because I was kissing girls too much. A lot of people didn't like that. <laughs> what do you mean? I was getting a kiss from a girl to start out the show. And a lot of people are like, this is a waste of time. We don't like to see this guy kissing that much. He's not like particularly good looking or anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a weird thing to say about a guy getting a kiss. <laughs> well, if it's like a hot guy, there's like intrinsic value in him making out. But if it's just a normal looking guy making out with hot chicks, it kind of wears out after a while. Yeah. Haters. But, yeah. But there was a little chatter. And then I, I, I did like... I had like a lot of material banked up, so my minutes were pretty good. And then slowly it started fading. And then with the whole Rick Diaz thing, it really flared up. Yeah. Yeah. And when people talk about your um, looks and stuff like that, does it ever actually make no, you insecure? I love it when they talk about my looks. Yeah. When they talk about my comedy, that hurts. I want you to make fun <laughs> of my small eyes and my dick. I'm like, hell yeah, they like me. Whenever I see like chinky eyes, I'm like, they're a fan. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, I don't care about my looks. Yeah, but it's the comedy that bothers you. Yeah, now that I said that. Everyone knows. Because <laughs> the comedy I chose, the looks I had. I love how you realize that right after you said it. it like, yeah. I didn't realize it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. You have squinty jokes. <laughs> yeah, squinty jokes. It's going to be ridiculous now. Body shaming. They say body shaming is horrible. It's not that bad. There's yeah. way worse things. For body sure. shaming is standard. It's just yeah. what happens in high school. It's what... if, if body shaming works, though... If it gets under your skin, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's helpful because then you're like, oh, I should lose weight or I should get bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it can be helpful. But when you're stuck in that body <laughs> for the immediate future, you're like, oh, there's nothing I can do. I'm just trapped in like this yeah. fat body. Oh, yeah. fat body. I thought we were talking about little Nick. Or goofy. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm fucking huge, dude. <laughs> this, this is a triple this. XL, dude, t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big. You just make it look small. <laughs> yeah. Did I find out Ty was like an inch taller than me one time at his house? Cause I'm like, you're not taught. It fucking ruined me, dude. It wrecked me. <laughs> yeah, we did a whole back to back. And like, yeah. Yeah. Ty doesn't carry himself like he's a short king, though. He carries himself like a. I never noticed his height. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I'm a shorty, though. I, yeah, think I don't know. But also because I'm Mexican, you know, technically I'm like average size for a Mexican. So I never felt short growing up, you know, because everybody around me was this height. So it's kind of made me think less of you to find out he's only an inch shorter than you. I thought it'd be at least three. That's fucked up, dude. It was <laughs> three, That's fucked up. Want to I was it. so excited to have you here. <laughs> and you hate Bucky's? I don't here. hate Bucky's. No, I, I feel like system. you over there. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't I think, have started this. I started it, kind of. Yeah, you did start it. And and you were the one who wanted to stand back to back. And uh, I think something about Ty being gay, I was just like, hey, I'm bigger than him. <laughs> it's just like, what? Mentally, I couldn't. It just wouldn't. It was like a years of patriarchy don't give you another inch no nothing no white privilege for height nothing dude yeah my fucking people came here in boats and they had to fit i guess <laughs> yeah crazy oh flanagan's yeah. you can fit 500 of flanagan's in the boat. <laughs> yeah 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 the little nick bloodline we, yeah. we look at your family tree and it's just a bunch of little people yeah. <laughs> they're like you know log cabins they're like stacked like yeah. this you know what's fucked up is i'm like tall in my family that's, really that's i'm like crazy. i see like the the dudes in my family who are considered to be like the guy guys i see eye to eye with them basically yeah that's actually amazing yeah that's yeah. how we all got over here yeah i think i like uh what Hans, you said on stage, you're like, the white Asian alliance is natural or something like that. I don't remember that. You that said might something have been like, Bobby Lee. 
<laughs> no. The white Asian. Don't do that, that son, no. You're not doing this. No, that's probably not Bobby. Bobby. Lee. Yeah. He doesn't like to get political. I saw him today, actually. Yeah, he's in town. I tried to say hi, and he was like, I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> no biggie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I uh, remember Bobby Lee from L.A. So, like, I've always been cool with him, uh, like, you know, cool enough with him. But I think, like, you know, it, like, he's one that I think it had to have had a, like, huge difference for him or because you know he's been getting a lot of hate online lately and that's been happening with, yeah comics in general are getting a lot of hate online lately mm. it's just like it's turned into a really big like genre in youtube that's is funny. to like hate on comics and so like people are getting hundreds of thousands of views by making views about like you know audiences Awkward. are turning on so and so you know and yeah. it'll be like Burt Kreischer or Bobby Lee and then Chris I don't Delia blame them a, with all the shitty crowd work clips that are out on TikTok. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, no, for real. That's something I was talking about earlier was, yeah. yeah, the amount of shitty crowd work clips. And like, you know, for my show, um, Ty Rivera and Friends, if you guys are ever in Austin on a Wednesday, 10 p.m. here at Creek, Ty Rivera and Friends, Hans has been one of the comics on that before. But like with my show, um, I actually think it'll be more effective in the advertisement just to use a picture rather than a comedy clip because that's so oversaturated right now that it's not going to stop people. You know, people aren't going to stop to look at a clip. Yeah. It's, it's hard to capture what's happening in a show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and true. you're right, though, with the fact that people aren't really worried about the quality, so there are a lot of shitty crowd work clips. So when people do stop and they see something that's not good, it's almost like going to a comedy show that's not good. Yeah. Like, you're like, oh, I'm not going to stop on that again. And yeah. you're not there. You're not feeling it. It looks awkward as fuck. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of times you don't get an angle of the audience member's face. And, like, most of the people doing that are socially you know shut in they don't they they're like i don't go out oh look this is why it's because it's shitty out there mm. so they're all like shitty social people making fun of people that are actually going out and talking to people because they don't do that they're shut-ins do you do any crowd work yeah i do a little bit did you party with that stripper that was uh that you were no, that was when i was in a relationship <laughs> oh yeah that was a couple weeks back when that was happening yeah yeah i was at the mothership that night i was going up later me and you tend to go up around the same time when we're there it's yeah. usually like you know yeah it'll be like there was like that stripper there she was like i recognize we i was at your show I was like oh shit oh Nice to meet you. You want to hang out afterwards? Like, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> she was with like her boyfriend. I didn't really go anywhere with it, but people were like, whoa. They were like surprised that I, like, you know, like someone knew me. And yeah. They, well, it was funny when you told her, you know, now I'm the one on stage. How the tables have turned. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it was good. So what's your what's your plan with comedy? Like you sound like it, from the things we were talking about, it sounds like you have an actual plan with what you want to do. I just want to get better. These minutes are helping. Makes me realize how much you actually have to write. I just write a mountain of shit, so much shit, just to get a minute. And just like, okay, I need to write more. Obviously, you know, everyone's telling me it's not good. So I'm just trying to increase the amount of shit that I write. I guess. How much do you write a day? Like, do you do like, uh, I'm going to write a hundred jokes, 2,000, a hundred jokes. I can't even think like that. I can't even think like, I'm going to write a joke right now. I write 2,000 words. It's like about four pages. It's uh, okay. about an hour and it's just stream of consciousness. And then I go back and like, is anything funny from what I actually think? I don't actually try to be like a man walked into the bar one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't even write. I can't even imagine. I'm so jealous of people that are like, I'm going to write four jokes tonight. And they just write one, two, three, four. I, I can't even imagine doing that. I just write everything I'm thinking and hope any of it is good. Yeah. And then you try to turn it into a joke from there, like just the idea. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be funny when I'm writing. but Do you have anybody that you run it against? No, not usually. I've been hanging out with Paul Cyphers. Yeah. I've been consulting with him for the minute because I'm like, I'm hanging out with my girlfriend asking her for advice. <laughs> I might as well ask a real comedian. Yeah. yeah. So it showed me the benefit she did of like talking it out because otherwise I'd just be shut in. And so we have such a great resource and all these comedians in our town. Yeah, no, I agree with that. 
Yeah, you can run things against your actual friends and like comic friends and they get it. Cause yeah, you try that with normal people and it's just not the same. They don't know anything. They'll try. They they yeah. they will try to relate, but it's just like, <laughs> yeah, you don't get it, you know? And then they'll say something and they'll be like, that's funny. And you're like, that's not funny at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even know why you said that. Like you can just not talk for the rest of the night. Or my favorite is they'll laugh really hard and like, yeah, but that wasn't like that funny. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. You just laughed, you know? Yeah. They don't know what's going on with comedy. So no. Paul Cyphers is one of your regular friends. Who else are your regular friends? Like, because are have... you still on the road with Tony or do you do your own thing exclusively now? I do both. I'm going, I'm doing both this weekend. I'm going to Vancouver, BC on Thursday and then I'm flying all the way to Virginia and then I'm flying all the way back to Austin. Just fucking giant triangle. Nice. But uh, yeah, I do both. I run it by Jesse Burlingham sometimes. All those Boston boys I fell in line with. But I wish I had more. I, you know, I've been in this relationship just eating DoorDash and, um, you know, just playing Catan with this girl. Mm -hmm. So now I'm free. I can devote, you know, 100% of my time to this. Do you think that kind of fucked you up? Well, Definitely. Yeah, because I feel the same way. Like when I'm in a relationship with somebody and I have been in a few serious relationships before during my comedy life, not a lot because... You know, it's hard to, I don't have to tell you, I'm sure. I mean, I hope it was her, because if it's not, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I blame I blame her too much, and it's I was kind of mean about it, but mm. I do think, like, yeah, she took up so much of my time because she was like, why do you have to go home? Why can't you slip in the night with me and then go home? But mm. if I do that, then I don't get to go home, brush my teeth and my, you know, like, put away my clothes. Like, these little things that you do at home. And then I don't get to wake up in my house if I have like a pattern and a routine that I don't get to do. So it was just fucking up my my schedule, everything, my patterns. I'm yeah. If I'm autistic, I need my routines, and she was kind of fucking it up a little bit. But I don't. I think I just I'm not t as talented. I I need. I'm not talented enough to get away with writing as little as I did. I need to write more because I'm not. No, talented. Not yeah, true. no, I don't know. I mean, I'm a true creature of habit, so I deal with a lot of that too. Like when I am dating somebody, it'll really throw off everything I'm doing because it's exactly what you're saying. I'm not waking up and doing my regular routine. Like my routine is I don't drink coffee, so I go to the gym and do cardio. So if I'm not able to go and do cardio, I feel like I haven't really started for the day, you know? And so uh, like things like that will throw me off. And then you want to please the person you're with, you know, as far as they want you to be around. So you're like, all right, well, I will spend the night with you. And then that turns into like a couple of nights of you doing that. And then at a point you get like, and you can't help but resent them because at a point you do get like, I'm not doing shit I need to be doing because instead I'm doing what you want me to be doing. <laughs> yeah. And then there's no way to not have that. Even if you don't vocalize it in that same way, there's no way to not have those feelings affect the relationship you're in. Because at some point, whether it's like completely outward or somewhat inward, like you are gonna explode. You yeah. know, and so then you just end up in a situation where you're like, okay, well now I just, and then they can never forgive you. Like once you yell or, you know, once you like let them know that you don't, that you're resenting certain things, then they get like, well, I know you don't want to be around me. And it's like, that's not what I said. Yeah. <laughs> that is what you said. And then it's like, all right, well now we're spending the same amount of time together. Only we're arguing this time. Yeah. Oh. So it's not doing me any good to be in this relationship. No. Did you so ever true. notice when you were with her? I'm out of here, Christopher. <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> that was Sorry. Specific. I forgot. Look, Christopher, I love you and we're engaged, but I'm going to have to end it. I, for I forgot you were gay for a second. It made me laugh when you said Christopher. You pay too much for that ring. PTA. <laughs> I paid too much for that ring. Can I get it back? Oh, no, you're taking it to Utah? All right, cool. <laughs> See you in Salt Lake. <laughs> I'm a little PTSD gay right now. <laughs> what? I put the D in PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> penis touching sex <laughs> sex dick yeah penis, penis touching, touching sex, sex with dicks dick. <laughs> yeah did you ever notice though that's crazy when you were huh? with her like you'd be like damn playing guitar and be like damn I could actually like be doing a mic or a spot right now did you ever have like that mindset when you were with her yeah, yeah. are you a mic guy do you go to the open mics quite a bit not not as often anymore, but I want to. I think it's good for the Kill Tony. I think a lot of the open mic energy is similar to the Kill Tony energy. Very much so. Yeah, yes. yeah. I so, think you should be at mics. I think I should do mics, even though it hurts. 
<laughs> I should do it. It's a skill, man. You, I stopped doing it. I have no idea how to do it anymore. And I have to like regain that sort of like emotional place you have to be at to be like, yeah, this is shitty, but I'm still funny in like a weird kind of way. Yeah, you can't yeah. care. You do have to like, uh, you have to kind of like separate yourself from your emotions when it comes to open mics and any kind of like wanting them to think you're funny. You just have to really that's when you really are doing it for you yeah. is when you're at most open mics once in a while you get an open mic where you know you have a fun audience and it's like this is like a real show but more often than not you are just around the other comics and like with guys like you probably even more than with me uh because i get a fair amount of this too but they want to see you fail <laughs> they do they yeah. like you know yeah. that happens a lot and they'll they there's a part of them that likes the fact that you've done some shit so when you get on stage they will give you a big round of applause and woo and they're like okay now let's settle in and watch yeah. this motherfucker eat shit and show us he's not really what he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, i killed harder than you did yeah i yeah. could do better yeah. crapped in a bucket yeah, I mean, that's not just natural, though. That's what I love about comedy is that at any moment, the guy that's just been doing it a year can shoot past everybody. Yeah. It's not a sport. It's just it's silly. Like, it's silly to tie your emotions up into it. It's just like if you enjoy getting in front of people and talking, then you should do it. And that's all you should really try to do is get better at that. And then everything else is just, you know, gravy. But yeah a lot of people do see it as competition like that's one thing i noticed with the whole cat williams situation and i think in a lot of cases it happens a lot more with the ethnic comics because for a long time it was set up that way where there was like one popular latino comic or one popular black comic and i think that the, that even like to a degree with the asian comics you know that's why there's kind of that beef between like Joe Coy and Edwin San Juan because Edwin San Juan felt like he was doing it first and the Joe Coy came along and really he popular. He stole his essence. That's what they say. <laughs> and a couple jokes too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't even That's know. what Edwin says, all right? I'm, not, I'm just saying what Edwin says. You don't know who Edwin is? Edwin who? That's because Joe Coy is that big. Yeah. I love that. Edwin thing. San Juan does not matter. Clip it. Tag it. <laughs> I don't know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> Tag it. Collaborate with Clip him. It. Yeah. <laughs> Send it to He's him. He's a collaborator. <laughs> Sorry, Edwin. <laughs> yeah, that was back in the day. That was like with white people too, though, with the Tonight Show, and like there was only one spot, and we all had to get on Johnny Carson. Yeah. That's why I don't like Rick Diaz is because he's bringing it back to that, where he's sort of like there can only be one spot, and we just got to like fight for it. And it's like nowadays you got Brett Kreischer, you got Whitney Cummings. You can choose whoever you want. You don't have to, like, make it a competition. But I guess but, some people like that. You know, I don't think you did yourself any favors when he went to shake your hand and you did not shake his hand. And it's not... When? When uh, was this? <coughs> H-E-B. How soon we I did we shake forget. his hand at H-E-B. Oh, how soon we forget. <laughs> I shook his hand at H-E-B. No. Ooh. When you won? Yeah. Did it's you? Just yeah. Mandela effect. I just didn't act like it's just it. Just the Mandela uh, effect. I totally I shook his hand on stage. On the yeah. last night. No way. No, I shook his hand. You can screenshot to... it. I remember shaking his hand. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna shake his hand, but I'm gonna talk shit. Really? I thought you didn't shake his hand, and you said "fuck you" no, or "go home" or whatever you I said. I did say that, but I also shook his hand. Wow. <laughs> Okay, then it's just the mentality, the vibes of us of me not shaking his hand, so no one noticed, and you know, like Bernstein Bears effect or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I was it's wrong on my, my effects. Memory. I got my. But effects. that's one of those things you got to shake Burns the hand. Effect. It's like yeah. him floating in. <laughs> <laughs> you got to shake effect. the that's hand. People get really offended if you don't do that. Yeah. Well, that's what I thought. I thought you hadn't shaken his hand. I don't know. I must have looked down when you actually shook it, because all I heard was you saying, you know, like go home and that kind of stuff. And and so it looked like poor sportsmanship. And I think, I don't know, maybe it would do you some good to like when that comes out or if you have uh, access to the footage now to like um, screenshot like Me you shaking, shaking his hand, hand and being like, I did actually shake his hand because I there are a lot of us and yeah. I'm not bullshitting. There are a lot of us that thought you didn't shake his At hand. At this point, I've become a boogeyman. I <laughs> am a caricature of everything they hate but yeah i mean obviously i don't i'm not gonna kill myself or anything like i think a little bit of the response was negative and uh, like unhinged but 
No, I understand why they hate me. I, you know, I, I'm going to work to, to undo that. But yeah, I mean, right now you can hate me because I'm confident that I can undo it. So it doesn't hurt me as much. Would you describe Rick Diaz as gay? <laughs> Interesting. Now we're getting into it. No, Slow I wouldn't. I wouldn't honor him with that honorific. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Thank less you. than gay. Thank you for being in the community. You That's right. Let's give him a round of applause. He definitely. He's not gay. He's European. Yeah, he really, is worse, he really yeah. passed that one. That wasn't the way I expected that to go. Because so. America really does hate sports. <laughs> poor sportsmanship. Like we yeah. love competition, but if the winner doesn't have good sportsmanship, America will hate that. Not yeah. saying Yeah, like John Jones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we really thought you hadn't. Me and Hooch definitely thought you hadn't. Yeah. I mean we didn't talk shit about you. I remember shaking his hand. Maybe I'm fucked up and maybe yeah. I did it. Yeah. Gaslighting yourself right now? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, no, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> no. Actual footage of you and Rick shaking hands. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I didn't know who to support. You just, <laughs> you just <laughs> search Kim and shake hands. I didn't. I didn't know who to support. <laughs> okay, that's enough, Justin. Hey, Justin, Kim. I need you to keep your hands <laughs> off the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> that man's dangerous that back there. Good. Caught me off guard. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> all right, all right. It's the new Jamie. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is hard hitting journalism. I can't have this happening. <laughs> Look at how high those screens are. I know. You're like, like you're like that person in the Matrix. <laughs> the oh, so we have it. clear eye lines. That makes sense. The Gatrix. The gay tricks. The gay tricks. I used to have a joke about the gay tricks. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like he dodging cum in slow motion. <laughs> no, like there's a fight at the bar, and the gay tricks is when you fucking avoid the hit and also don't spill your martini. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, at the time I used to drink Kettle One Dirty Martinis. It was my thing. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right. Well, so what do you think of the Cat Williams thing? Do you have any feelings? I saw on that? the whole thing. I loved it. It was a great episode. He's an old man. He's a uh, you know <laughs> little bitter, uh, but we need to respect our elders. I think we need to let them be a little. Why'd you look dead at me? <laughs> I said we need to respect <laughs> your podcast. Okay, that's quite enough. <laughs> team meeting. He was like, we need to. Yeah, team meeting. Team meeting. I feel like you've been attacked. Hans Kim doesn't come down. <laughs> You'll be dead soon, anyways. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> team meeting, Hans. Uh, will you be the new host for the show? Attack! Attack! Just attacked. Just tie in a casket, face down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you thought it was a good interview? You liked it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing I got to say, and I'm going to end up making a full video on it on my own, but we can talk about it here, is I don't consider Cat Williams to be a goat. I think he was very uh, good at improv comedy, but I don't consider him to be an actual goat. And when he you... says, like, he's put out 12 specials or whatever, okay, why is it we all only know uh, Pimp Chronicles and American Hustle? Those are the only two we know. So I think he confuses quantity and quality. And it's like, yeah, you have turned out a lot of them. But like that one, I tried to watch that one. And I was hot on Cat Williams back then because I really love Pimp Chronicles. And then I got to admit, American Hustle, I saw that. And I was like, mm, not so much. And then we got to the other one, which I don't know if it was the one that was from Baltimore. But I just remember him starting with, you know, they have all the weather over here. And it's like, okay, well, cool. And everyone's like, <laughs> ah! We do have all the weather, <laughs> but it's like <laughs> Ty doing black voice is my favorite. <laughs> it's so accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it wasn't like it's not. He's not that great when it comes to stand up. Like, is yeah. he great at creating a spectacle? One hundred percent. But when it comes to stand up, yes, it's he not had what it some is. great specials. I don't know which ones. You, did you see the one with the, him in the green jacket? That's Pimp Chronicles. Yeah, the crazy that hair. one was great. Yeah, where he sweated out his perm. Where he's so smart, where he's like has the energy and he also has the jokes to back it up. Yeah, but when you're upset about a joke from 30 years ago that was pretty much an act out, 
Like, because if you write down the actual, because I watched both jokes earlier today, you know, his version and Cedric's version. And I was like, okay, so you both did a terrible joke. <laughs> I think you should both forget you ever did that and not call the public's attention to it. If somebody stole it, you were lucky they took it from you. You can write better than that. Who would be on your guys' you. go Mount Rushmore of comedy for Hall of Fame? Dave Chappelle, for sure. Okay. All right, there you go. Well, you can. I'll give mine, and then you can give yours. Okay. So, uh, Mount Rushmore would be four, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, Dave Chappelle for sure, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, and I probably. And this isn't a politically correct pick, but it's just because of she really influenced me. Would be Roseanne Barr. Okay, it's a good Mount. Yeah, she really nineties babies or eighties. Yeah, eighties. Yeah. What about you, Hans? Uh, mine is not is gonna piss a lot of people off. Tony Hinchcliffe, <laughs> <laughs> uh. Joe Rogan, <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> David Lucas, and William. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with those two. I don't yeah. Much yeah, I second that. That is the most politically advantageous Rushmore I could have had. Yeah, yeah, that's what the way I need to be thinking. So uh, <laughs> I'll do, have what he's having. <laughs> I do comedic Rushmores like people in uh, the monarchy in Europe did uh, marriages. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't love you, but the Habsburg Empire must unite <laughs> Austria. Who would be yours, though? Um, Bill Burr. Okay. Mitch Hedberg. Nice. Um, uh, Steve Martin. Oh, okay. Uh, and Brian Regan. Or Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan was one of my favorites. Joe is Rogan. still one of my favorites. This is yeah. solid I think he gets too much hate. I think his comedy is so good. I agree with that 100%. And I had actually mentioned it on a, a podcast that I did, one of my own podcasts, but I just didn't release it because I didn't like some of the other stuff that I said, which wasn't to deal with Rogan or anything like that. It was like on the uh, Las Vegas comedy scene. And then okay. I didn't edit it. And, you know, I mean, like I didn't edit it right then and post it. And then a couple of weeks later, I was like, why would I even talk about the Las Vegas comedy scene? I don't live there anymore. You know, cause I had left, I had recorded it before I moved. It was like the last one I recorded and then I got caught up with the move. And so I felt like it was too far removed. But on that, I said, because that night that I went to go watch you guys at MGM, uh, like just the, like the the way his writing is and how self-aware he is about not only what he actually is but what people think of him and the way that he actually puts that into his sets and at the time he was talking about the n-word situation and he also talked about his friendship with elon musk and i just thought it was really amazing and i thought more people needed to actually see that like people always want to go back to joe rogan and uh tool hump stool humping and i was like how many years ago was that yeah. I mean, like, and honestly, during that time, how many comics weren't humping stools? Because that <laughs> became that became like a thing. You know what I mean? Everybody was humping the stool. And so it's just kind of like, yeah, you know, there was also a time when we were all wearing guest jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back then it wasn't hack. Yeah. It's yeah, hack guest now. Jeans we're not hack. Just playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all guest jeans. We're not hack. I think he talks about exactly what he wants to talk about and he makes it funny. And I think that's so impressive. And it's like what I want to hear from him. Yeah. Yeah. He talks about whatever he wants to talk about and he can make anything funny. And he's like, I don't know. He just has like a complete theory of every, like it all fits into the universe. Yeah. And he also admits to being a dumb guy, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is why cancel culture usually eats it on him is because, you know, I've got this 20 year old that has no life experience telling me that Joe Rogan is an idiot and like, you know, he's terrible and he's racist and blah, blah, blah. And then you have this guy that's like 50 and he's fucking made millions of dollars and he admits he knows nothing. Yeah. And it's like, well, why should I listen to you over him yeah. when at least he hasn't figured it out enough to know that he's an idiot? Like, because I think most people, if they were really honest with themselves, they'd realize how much they don't know. And they probably fit in a little closer to the idiot category than the genius category, which is where a lot of 20 year olds <laughs> put themselves. Okay. Yeah. We all want to act like we know. The people that want to act like they know are the ones that know the least. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's also a trait of being young. You know, it's just a trait of when you're in your 20s, you do feel like I remember when I was in my 20s, I really did feel like I knew things. 
<laughs> and then the older I've gotten, yeah, I felt like I would yeah. argue with people in bars. I feel like I know everything. I'm yeah, that a, makes sense. Yeah, I'm yeah. 23. I'm like, shit, dude. Y'all are, y'all are dumb. That's I would get into fist yeah. fights with people over opinions. Yeah. Like, legitimately. Yeah. You know, I just really knew that I knew this. Yeah. And you weren't going to tell me any different. And then the older I got, the more I got like, mm. <laughs> you could be right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, yeah. I'll say something and somebody will say something else. And I'm like, because mm, life might just, be right. At, at, at this age, life just just humbles you until you admit that you're kind of half of an idiot. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. I think. Yeah, eventually you do figure out, like, yeah, I may not know everything, yeah. so I might want to chill out a little bit and stop calling people names. <laughs> <laughs> and look at myself. Let's just see, see where doing. this goes. Yeah. It's yeah. better to let things play out than to just be, like, stopping it and be like, this is how it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Mike Lacey from the... Uh, have you ever done comedy? Are you have you done LA at all, really? Yeah, a little bit, not a lot. Have you ever done comedy in Magic Club? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I did it once. I feel like they'd really love you over there. I feel like Mike Lacey would really love you. Have I you accidentally met him? said the f word there. Mm. <laughs> and you're not and? supposed to swear at the comedy and Magic Club. <laughs> oh. Yeah, unless you're like Dom Irera. You got to have some real or clout. Paul Reiser, or, you know, like there's some people that really get away with a lot. John, John Lovitz, you know, like the comics that have been around for 40 years, they can do whatever they want. But also the audience looks at it different because the audience there does get uptight. I don't know how they were with you saying the F word like the audience. I kind of slipped it in. It wasn't like a big punchline. Yeah. And so they were cool about it. Yeah. I didn't even notice I said it. Yeah, if you're like, it's kind of like they're all like old and rich or older and rich. And so if you're even older than them, then you can say it because you're like their grandparent. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean? And also you're probably way more successful than they are. <laughs> you know, it's a so pretty they, nice uh, part of town, isn't it? Huh? Hermosa Beach. Yeah. Isn't it pretty nice? Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. But Mike Lacey, the owner, uh, he liked me a lot. And so we would chat quite a bit like while the shows were going on. And um, one time he told me and, you know, he's made a lot of money. He's super cool. And he's had that club forever, you know, and he's dealt with the biggest comics in the world. Um, he's also very generous. I mean, like even besides like, you know, paying you to do the shows, but also just like, you know, I remember one time we talked about um, I had to travel the next day. And then he asked me if I wanted him to add another zero to my check. And he didn't seem like he was joking at all. But uh, that was before I really had the. Uh, the mindset that I had now, so I still had pride and was like, "No, I'm cool." <laughs> <laughs> An extra you zero, fool. yeah, but I nah. you can keep that. You fool. I did, yeah, yeah, and that's lit legitimately. I was like, "No, I got it." And then I'm driving to fucking Salt. Literally, I was driving to Salt Lake the next day or after <laughs> I left there. Yeah, that was dumb. I should have said yes and flown myself, but it is what it is. But um, yeah, one time he told me he was like that. Uh, he was like, people want to be right all the time. I actually like being wrong because I mean, it means I learned something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. I uh, don't know. I feel like there's something to being an idiot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the humble defeat can be better than a proud victory sometimes. I know that's like a fucking gay way to put it, but <laughs> it's gay way to put it. Okay. It's a homosexual way to say it. Team meeting. Team meeting. All right. Nick's off the show. Nick's off the Hans could be the new instead of Nick. Hans is the new Nick. Can you I grow could a beard? Be short. Give him your beanie. That's fucked up, dude. <laughs> I could be Asian. <laughs> Give him your Prove beanie it. and your Bucky shirt. <laughs> turn in <laughs> your yeah, turn in your uniform. Your gun in your bag. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> turn in your uniform. Hand in your. <laughs> you no longer work for this <laughs> this outfit. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. You're too dangerous, kid. You're too dangerous. <laughs> so what else? What What do you think nobody's ever asked you before? What What would you like to say about yourself that nobody's ever asked you about? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I think uh, I try. I I like to not uh, have people talk about. I don't want to talk about myself too much. I guess I'm. Uh, I don't like to think about myself. Maybe that's a good thing. I think a lot of storytelling comedians like to think about themselves, and that's why they they're good at telling a story because they're always in their head and they try to make it an interesting place. I just try to like, hmm. you know, not be in my own head as much as possible. Yeah. Cause you're a one liner comic. Yeah. Yeah. You think that'll ever change? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Cause I love Mitch Hedberg. I think he was great. Um, I love Demetri Martin. Um, and he's sort of getting more like personal and stuff. 
Yeah, yeah I think I could be like a, a joke writer that also tells personal stories on stage. Do you remember your jokes? Because like a lot of, because, you know, I've been friends with a few one-liner comics and the one-liner comics I know have always told me that they don't do any crowd work because they have to actually memorize their jokes and have the last word from the joke they just did be the cue to the first word for the joke they're doing next. Mm. And so do you have to do that or is there a different mm. way you do it? I do it a different way, I guess. Yeah. But it is pretty much blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I can get out of it and get in into it. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to be all like that. I don't think they have to do it that way either. I don't know. Like, that's what they like. You know, I don't know if you know Tracy McDonald, but she's a pretty big. Well, you know, she I don't know what she's doing now. She got mad at me one time when she didn't <laughs> do well after a last comic standing audition. And I did. Hey, Trace. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so much. I'm sad. sure there's the other memories you guys have together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the last one, Hans. And that's what we remember. <laughs> Should have made nice, Tracy. <laughs> but I really did like her. You know, it was one yeah. of those situations because I like. I don't know if you've had a lot of those happen before, but sometimes when you get an opportunity and somebody doesn't, they hold it against you, and yeah. it's like it wasn't my fault. I didn't take that opportunity from you. You know, we both did the same showcase. Case, and there were several spots and I'm a brown gay man and you're a white woman. So it's not even like we were in competition as far as being that slot. Yeah. So for you to get mad at me afterwards, which I really on I joke, um, but I hold no hard feelings towards her for it. I really wish we were still cool because I really did look up to her because she had done star search and some other stuff. You know, this was closer to when I was first starting. I probably haven't talked to her in like 15 years or something like that. And uh, I, and also it was one of those situations where. She was one of those comics that believed in the old system where it's like, you know, you're only as good as your last credit and you need to update your credit. So she, I think she had a lot more writing on the last comic standing audition <laughs> than I did because like, she was like the last thing I've really done that was noteworthy was Star Search. So now I got to get a new credit. Mm. And so, you know. What a vicious life they lived back then. Yeah, well, they really did. But, you know, and I was somewhere in between because it took me a while to catch on to the social media thing and see the value of that because I came in when it was still like the system of waiting for Comedy Central to pick you. You know, it was like a real pick me situation back then. And now you have so many attitude or so many avenues like, you know, you're you have YouTube, you have Instagram, TikTok. TikTok. I mean, there's so many ways that you can promote yourself that you don't have to wait on anybody else. And so I think that they just had a different kind of pressure that like I felt to a degree, but I wasn't in that same position exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I had people, I had quite a few instances like that where people felt like I had taken something from them and then they never spoke to me again. And it was like, I didn't do it. Like <laughs> technically the execs at NBC did it, you know, like they're the <laughs> ones that picked. Like I didn't, I. Well, when you feel so out of control of your situations, you just lash out at the most convenient target, not the most accurate one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Damn. That's true. That's true. Very yeah, wise, Hans. That's why, that's why I throw plates. <laughs> <laughs> that's like an old trope, right? Yeah. Throwing yeah, a plate yeah. in a dinner situation, yeah. like yeah. American Beauty. Yeah. yeah, throwing a plate, flipping a table. Yeah. <laughs> I was a thrower as a kid. For my sure. nephew but yeah so anything coming up that you want to plug or that you want to let people know about um the uh batavia illinois i'll be at uh, the comedy vault next weekend when is this coming out this will come out in what two weeks i have the regular show on tuesdays that ty has done and um the wednesdays i have hans kim and friends at black rabbit and then on Monday is Kill Tony. So hopefully I'm still on it by the time this airs. <laughs> you will be. What is the the show at the reg or the regulars is on Wednesday? Tuesdays. Tuesdays. And that's at Vulcan. Vulcan, yeah. Yeah. It's a fun time. And what do you, did you guys decide what you win or what he loses or what? We haven't decided. Do, where do you keep your bones eye belt? In my closet. Yeah. It's hanging on the rack. <laughs> Just looped it around. Are you going to bring it with you? Is he going to win that if he wins? I shouldn't sure, even can have that. <laughs> if he wins. If. But yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the stakes are. I don't think there are any stakes. Maybe he can come back on Kill Tony. 
<laughs> and then I, you know, maybe he can take my spot or whatever. You know, even when you know, if he beats me, then he deserves it. But I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, well, that a boy. I have faith in you. Thank like you, I man. said, as an audience member, I thought you won the first time, and he knows that too. You know, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> he knows what I thought. You know what I mean? I I I said it to him too. I thought uh, he had more pops like per minute but you had bigger pops and to me that's what made it the better you mm -hmm. know not to bring it back to the cat williams thing and i'll say this and then we can wrap up but um like cat williams talked about laughs per minute and like that's how he can tell you how much funnier he funnier he is than you <laughs> but it's like to me it's the same as like fighting if somebody throws a bunch of fucking powder puffs and then somebody comes in and just power punches yeah significant strikes compared to just throwing yeah it's just like okay well you're right you did fucking throw more but at the same time yeah if his more, were more effective then who really wins yeah. well thank you ty it's a very unique and unheard of opinion but i'm glad that you hold it I'm not. I'm just kidding, but yeah. I'm good for unique and unheard of opinions. That, I'm saying that you I thinking you that, won. that I won was unique. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, thank you for doing it. I love you. I really do. I appreciate thank you doing you, it. I had a great time. Yeah, no, we'll have you on again. We'll see what happens after, and then we'll maybe do it after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless I'm totally in the shit and the dumps. Yeah. You guys don't even want me anymore. We'll come over to your house, and we'll do it from there. <laughs> we'll do it while you're under a blanket and yeah. mad at everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Hans. We thank appreciate you, you. Thank you, Hans. Thank you, Hans. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, man. Good night, everybody. Good night, number one podcast in the world. In the world! <laughs> Sassiest podcast Sassy. in the world. <laughs>